folks off for a living, so I'm not going to use the microphone. Uh, I'm pretty used to uh, actually screaming at professional players, but uh, I think uh, the reality for obviously for a completely different reason. If I do use uh, four word alert, uh, words, that, that doesn't start with age, I meant to say hope. Just make sure you know that. A lot of times uh, in the locker rooms, there's different, uh, different kind of words coming out. No, obviously, Jonathan, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, on behalf of JB and myself, we're deeply humbled to be up here. This is really not about us. We're just very, very fortunate that we can give back. First and foremost, we stand here in front of you as, as parents who lost two beautiful children to a disease that we had no idea it was. I stand here in front of you as an LFS patient. I had uh, diagnosed in 1997 with severe aplastic anemia, which is obviously non-cancerous blood disorder, uh, which someday we will find out how it all relates to each other from the genetic makeup, and we have all the leading experts obviously here. So we stand in, here in front of you to simply try to find answers and cures for all the families that are battling every single day. Uh, Soccer for Hope was simply founded for Jamie and I when we wanted to give back four years before we had children to give back at a woman of Transplant City of Hope. And we want to give back to all the nurses, to all the doctors who've done miracles for, for me and they've done miracles for all the other families who are being treated at that time. Growing up in Switzerland, it was a little bit of a different setup. I didn't know that in, in this country, a lot of things was based on, obviously, on, on your financial ability and insurance and policies, and these are all the things we always wanted to fight because we thought every child should have... You can't hear me with that? Oh, okay, all right, sorry, we'll do that. Now I've got to be, really, be really careful what I'm saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Maybe I missed the memo. I wasn't, I, I wasn't being combined. I'm not going to start over again, though, because I want to be very brief. So with that said, um, Jonathan is absolutely right. For me, it was always the answer, no, is not something that we wanted to tolerate or could, or could uh, accept as a family. So when our son at age... 10 months old was diagnosed with a rare brain tumor. We wanted to make sure we wanted to find the absolutely best. The fact that Jonathan Finley, which is up the street from us in Los Angeles, um, was clear for us that we wanted to go up there and move there. It was actually Jonathan who said, if you have any other siblings, you should be testing them for P53. And I just never thought that you would have two children at the same time be diagnosed with a very rare brain tumors. But thanks to Jonathan's persistence, we actually did test our daughter. And sure enough, we actually didn't just only found one brain tumor at CBC. We also found a, a low-grade glioma at the same time, which Jonathan miraculously was able to cure her off. But then, unfortunately, after eight-year gracious battle, she had passed away of an eight, eight, adrenal, I can never say the word, ACC, which many of you obviously know. But what is more important in our family history, we, as I said at the beginning, we're basically representing all of you. This is one family. This is one collaboration. This is where all of us come together as doctors, as scientists, as families, as institutions. And I had the distinct pleasure to speak at the 2010 conference at the NIH. And I think many of you, some of the doctors, some a little bit younger, Jonathan did have long blonde hair at that time. Uh, they, were on that, they were all in this room as well too. And I got to meet Dr. Fraumeni. Uh, actually, David introduced me to Dr. Fraumeni. And I was, I was really surprised to find out that that syndrome really, that they found about in 1969, right? And so I said to David, my first question was, how, how in the heck did it take us 41 years to have a conference? And what has taken so long, and how many lives have been lost in this, which you didn't know? So I challenged that day at the opening speech, all the doctors and scientists in there and said, hey, what have we really done in 41 years? There's people dying every single day. Uh, at that time, we had lost our son, and I was uh, sincerely hoping that we could save our daughter. And we had truly access to absolutely the best doctors in the world. Many of you are being in here. And we couldn't save her. So it's very, very clear, as often as you hear, uh, we're close to a cure. No, I do not believe we're close to a cure because there's still children dying every single day. And I think for doctors and scientists, as much process as we're making and progress we're making, you have to understand when you're in a family shoes, when you're a parent, uh, when you're a sibling, you know, we don't have tomorrow. We only have today. So. Please remember that, and I know you work always overtime and you have a regular job to do all this, but don't ever, ever forget that every single day that passes, 
makes a huge difference. Somebody, every MRI for us, we're going into an MRI hoping that we cannot find anything and we get three months. I just talked to our good friend Dave Civiletti, whose family is obviously got being tested all the time as well too. And I think you had a wonderful, where are you Dave? You had a wonderful MRI just recently, right? So, th yes, absolutely. So the, fa the fact that parents today have to go into an MRI expecting that we're gonna find something is not the norm. We should be able to go to an MRI knowing there's nothing there. So we're still dealing with this. So again, we're extremely pleased to host this conference here. I will say there's a lot of progress being made. You can tell people come from worldwide. We're very, very interested to hear all the updates. But I will challenge you again to ask yourself, what have we done since last year when people came together two years ago? What have we done since 2010? And please don't only be satisfied by making small little progress. As I would say in the game of soccer, ultimately you're being judged by results. As a professional coach, you can have the greatest game plan. If you end up losing the game, trust me, and you lose a lot of games in a row, your owner will ultimately tell you, hey, you know what? You have a great philosophy, but you're at the wrong place, and you gotta go on, okay? In my case, it's actually nice. I'm also the GM, so I have a little bit more job security than most of the other players. <laughs> but saying that is here, what I would challenge you is, if you do this, don't be satisfied by just making progress. Try to find more answers for us. Try to find a cure for us. We have the absolutely best, and please, Use this two, three days to collaborate with each other. There's nothing worse when you have some of the absolutely best, most, uh, most brilliant scientists and doctors and institutions in one room, and we will not collaborate of all of this. If we need to bring an elephant in here next year, we will bring an elephant, Judge. It's no problem, okay? We will bring, yes, absolutely. But I would think the elephant is already in the room, and that's all of you who can all contribute, and that includes the families, that includes everybody else, so please make sure let's work together, let's collaborate. Obviously, special thanks to Jonathan, to Nationwide, the LFSA for, for being here too, as well, obviously with Ohio State, and for everybody else who contributes, we're all in this together, so let's find a solution, let's find a cure, so thank you very much for having us.